Hello, and thank you for joining me today on The Political Conversationalist. My name is Ben Phipps, and on this Friday, we're going to be doing our very first uh, inaugural quick news update. So I'm going to pick three, I think, very important pieces of political news, and I'm going to go over them very briefly, and I've got them written down right here in my journal. So without further ado, let's begin. The first one we're going to talk about is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I probably didn't say that right. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is uh, notable because she won the primary in New York's congressional 14th district, and uh, she beat the number four House Democrat, Joe Crowley. Now, she is kind of a controversial figure. Now, not only is she controversial because she beat the incumbent House Democrat, who was very popular among uh, traditional Democrats, but she's very uh, controversial among Democrats in general because she's not a typical Democrat. In fact, she calls herself a Democratic Socialist. And if that sounds familiar, it should, because she worked for Bernie Sanders during his 2016 campaign. Some of her things she stands for are Medicare for all, the abolition of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is also known as ICE. Don't know how that one's gonna work out. And she's gonna drag big money out of politics. Hasn't said how, but that's what she wants to do. I'm not, that's an amicable goal. I can't really uh, blame her for that, but got to have a plan, not just a vision. Anyway, so yeah, she won uh, the New York's 14th Congressional District primary. She's not in the House as of yet. She will be running against the Republican uh, nominee come November. But being New York, it's very, very highly unlikely that she's going to uh, uh, lose a very traditionally Democratic state. We'll see how that plays out. And uh, she's also influenced, of course, with her major, what, what is really a major victory among Democrats. She's influenced some other people who have more socialist views, views uh, to kind of uh, talk more about what they believe and be more open about it and other people to step up and try to win office that has socialist uh, views. If you watch my socialism video, which hasn't come out yet, according to the time I'm recording this, but when it will, you'll, you'll understand uh, I think a little bit better what people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez really mean. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. So he made this uh, announcement back in the end of June that he was going to step down by the end of July. Now that's very important because if you don't know, now you do, that the president gets to appoint the next Supreme Court Justice. Now it has to be approved by Senate, but we have a majority Republican Senate this will likely all go down before um, the November elections, so we'll still have a majority Republican Senate. We have a Republican conservative president in Donald Trump, and it's almost 100% certain going to uh, put in a, another, not really a Republican, but a conservative Supreme Court justice. And the reason that's important is Anthony Kennedy was very liberal, and uh, he was oftentimes the swing vote, because there's nine of them, he was oftentimes the fifth man on the liberal side of issues. In fact, most famously, he was the deciding vote on Obergefell? Obergefell versus Hodges, which is uh, the Supreme Court ruling that allowed same-sex marriage nationwide. He was the deciding man on that. So uh, if, he, if he retires, as he says he's going to, and Trump appoints another, uh, a more conservative justice, that's going to swing the balance of the entire court back into a more conservative light, as you'll have five conservatives and four liberals. So that could be good or bad, depending on where you stand on some of the issues. Some people are worried that Trump's going to put in someone and they're going to overturn Roe v. Wade and overturn Ober Obergefell versus Hodges. And uh, those things wouldn't happen immediately, probably wouldn't happen at all. But uh, with the Supreme Court taking more and more power, it becomes increasingly important to vote for president because those are the people deciding who's in Supreme Court. And uh, if, when I do my gay marriage video, which is a few weeks out, we're going to talk about how uh, the Supreme Court is probably the most powerful people in the world. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Now, the third thing is a little less political and a little more international. And we're still talking U.S., though. So the U.S.-China trade war. This was on the very top of the uh, U.S. news page in the BBC, which is where I get most of my news from. It's pretty unbiased. And uh, basically, if you don't know what happened, Trump put tariffs on a lot of products coming into the United States, and a lot of people are mad at him for it. Most of them are raw materials, be it uh, steel, iron, 
copper, aluminum, things like that. Now we have those resources over here, but a place like China that can afford to pay its workers so much less, they can really, uh, they can produce it more cheaply and it's cheaper for us instead of producing it ourselves to buy it from a place like China. In fact, this trade, uh, these tariffs rather, are directly, uh, according to Trump, supposed to help with the trade deficit we have with China. So we're always going to have trade deficits with countries that have uh, such low labor costs and uh, such poor human rights. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, Trump put the tariffs on mostly raw materials. China responded by putting tariffs on agricultural things such as food and uh, food, uh, things that go with food, food byproducts, things like that. Automotive industry, Teslas, Toyotas, whatever, uh, because we make a lot of cars over here. Not just American cars are made over here. Toyotas I'm not sure about, but definitely some of them. And uh, medical products such as medicines. also saw some things like coal is sent over from America to China, as well as some petroleum products like uh, not raw crude oil, but some things like uh, maybe kerosene or petroleum jelly, those uh, slightly more refined uh, types of petroleum products. And uh, people are mad at Trump about it. And uh, we're going to talk about this way, way, way far in the future. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the topic here. Uh, it's called vacillation. And if you don't know what vacillation means, it means rapidly going back and forth between two positions. And if you look at American politics, we vacillate. Every four years, we pretty much change, do, a, do a 180. And if not four years, eight years. So as a president, you have four, maybe eight years to save the world. A strategy like putting tariffs on raw materials to boost uh, the steel workers, to boost manufacturing in America, to boost mining in America, which are all good amicable goals, that's going to be a long-term solution. That's going to be 10, 20, 30 years even before those effects are going to be seen. Short term, you're just going to have uh, an increase in a lot of prices and a whole lot of people mad at you. So there's absolutely uh, very little um, very little chance that these tariffs are going to survive. Uh, very little chance, in my opinion, that Trump's going to get reelected. And even if he does, very little chance that the positive impact he's wanting from these tariffs will occur during his presidency. So unless, which is unprecedented, uh, we have another conservative president right after Trump and they give it, you know, 8, 12, 16 years maybe, uh, we're not going to see the positive effects of these tariffs. It's a long-term solution. But uh, like I said, we tend to do a 180 every four to eight years in our policies. So something to think about. It's not a horrible idea. It's just a long-term solution. And most people in America are short-term uh they, they see short term. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about the big three things going on in American politics right now. Uh, next week, we'll probably going to discuss if nothing else major happens, probably going to discuss the situation at the border and uh, maybe some possible solutions for that. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Phipps and we'll see you next time.